So I can run around. I can attack. Are you still there? To delete attack again. If I click while I'm attacking, it doesn't work. If I can run around and I attack, you can see I can attack. This tutorial is going to cover setting up a 3D character with a running, idle and attack animation. I will also go further and show you how to blend animations so your character can run and attack at the same time. If you don't have a character, that is fine. I do have a Unity package file that you will be able to download, link in the description. And upon double clicking this in a project, it will give you the mandatory animations that we're going to be using. So you may click on import. So once you've imported that, we can go to models and player. And we can find the idle run and standing melee attack horizontal. So we can open this up. We can click on animation and see that's our attack animation. It looks very slow. If we make sure we're on the rig setting. We have an animation type. Make sure this is humanoid with all of them. In the idle on the animation tab, we want to make sure we loop the time. In the run on the animation tab, we also want to loop the time. In the standing melee attack horizontal, in the animation, we want to make sure we don't loop the time because we don't want to be looping this animation. The next thing we can do is in the new input system, we can create a new action. So what I can do is click on the plus button and this adds a new action. So I'm going to call this one attack. In the binding, we're going to make sure the path goes to our left mouse button. In the attack, make sure the action type is button. Make sure you click save asset and this will update all of the stuff we've worked on prior. So all of the input actions. Once we have that, we need to set up the animator. So we can simply go to models. Now I'm going to go to the idle, I'm going to drag it in. So we have our player right here. It's a lot bigger than our cube. So we might have to edit that later. But for now, this is fine. We have an avatar, which is fine. We also need a controller, which we don't have. In the animator tab, it is blank because we don't have an animator controller that we are controlling. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to create animator controller and you can call this player what I would like to do is drag in my idle animation and my running animation next we want to create transitions so I'm going to right click on my idle animation and click make transition click on the run animation and this will create a path we can also make a transition from our run all the way back to our idle because we want to be able to go from idle to run and run back to idle so if we click on the transition itself we have a bunch of stuff that comes up on the inspector now a lot of these have to do with how the actual transition is made so if we have a look now we're in our idle state it's gonna go to run which is cool I don't actually want exit time I don't want to wait for the animation to finish before I start going to my run animation or back to my idle animation. We can also change the transition duration. So I'm going to set that to 0.1 so we have a tenth of a second to go to our running animation. So if we look at it now, transitions and goes into running. I want to do the exact same thing for over here. So remove the exit time set the transition duration to 0.1. We also want to be able to attack, but the issue here is if we put our attacking right here, we can make it so when we're idle, we go to attack. When we run, we go to attack. But that would make it so we can't run while we are attacking, which could be an issue, could not be an issue. Either way, if you're in the middle of holding down the W key and running, and you click the attack button, your animation is going to stop, but you're still gonna be sliding along, which is an issue so let's fix that we can do this by creating a new layer so we have our base layer here but i'm going to click on the plus we're going to add an attack layer if we click on the attack layer 
we want to create an empty state. This empty state is going to be the default state for this layer. So when we're not attacking, we don't want it to be doing anything. So we can leave it empty. Now we want to go to our attacking animation otherwise. So I can simply drag in my attack animation. Similar to what we did before, I'm going to make the transitions towards the attacking and towards nothing. We're going to set our exit time to false. We're going to set our transition duration to 0.1. Another thing we need to double check is when we go from attack to new state, we want to make sure we have exit time. Now this transition duration can be whatever you like, but as long as we have an exit time. So once we finish the animation, we're going to go back to our original state. But how do we show running and attacking? We have two separate layers. What we can do is if we select the settings button on the attack layer, we can see there's a blending option. Now this can override the base layers animation or we can have it so it adds to the base layers animation. So we can run while we are attacking. We can also set the weight. So this blends the weight of the animation. If it's at zero, it doesn't really affect it at all. But if it's at one, we'll be able to see the full force of the attacking animation. The issue here is that it's going to be using the entire animation and we want to make it so it only uses the top half of the character for our attacking animation so we can still be running with our legs. How we solve this is by using a mask. So if I right click, create, scroll down till we find avatar mask. And I can just call this our attack mask. Once we have our attack mask, if we click on the humanoid, we can see that everything is green, but we don't want the legs to be affected. So we can click here, click here, click here, just like that. Now this removes the animation from being affected. What I can now do is if I click on the settings again on my attack layer, I can click on this little button and it comes up with our select avatar. So we can select our attack mask. Now that this is set up, all we have to do is set up some triggers that can be called through the code for our animations to run and also set up our player. In the base layer, I wanna to go to the parameters tab and we can add a new parameter. This can be a ball and I'm going to call it is running. So if we click on the transition where the arrow points towards the running animation, so we go from idle to run, in the conditions we can click on plus and this is already automatically set is running to true. And that's exactly what we want to do. In the opposite one, we can click on the plus as well in the conditions, but we want to set it to false. So when we're not running, we're going to go back to the idle animation. We also want a parameter for if we are attacking. I'm going to create a trigger. So if I click on the plus, click on trigger, I can type in is attacking. This is a one shot trigger that'll shoot the attacking as soon as we click the attack button. So what we can then do is we can set our transition that goes from nothing to our attack state in our attack layer. We can set the condition of is attacking. And that's all we need to do for that part. Next, I wanna set up the player. So if we go to the idle animation that we dragged into the scene and click on the drop down. We can click on player, so it has our player controller. Once we have the idle animation set up with the controller, we can copy all of the same settings. So we can copy the player movement script. You can click on add component, type in player, click on player movement, move speed to 10 is fine. We also want a box collider. We could even have a capsule collider. It's up to you. 
whatever you think suits. So capsule collider, if we click on edit, you can see it's tiny, but we can actually drag it up. And it's also a bit thin, so we can make it bigger. Like so. Whoop. Drag the squares out a bit. Now we also might want to change the name, so I could call it, call this one Samurai. Sweet. We can get rid of our player here. Just disable it for now. We can also go to our main camera and we can set our player to our Samurai. If we click on play, you can see it's a little too big. So we can change that offset but we might need to manually change that by setting our camera back in the editor. So we could have it that close or we can make it a lot further away. It's really your choice. Just like that. So as you can see, if you run the game now, we can walk around, but we don't actually animate, which isn't great at all. So let's fix that in the code. Let's go to our player movement script that we made before. Just like how we have our move and our turn voids, I'm gonna create an animate run void. So I can type in animate run, and this will take in our desired direction. So let's actually create that. I'm going to type in void, animate run, and we'll take in a vector 3, which is our desired direction. And what I'll do now is we're going to create a ball. So private ball is running, and we're going to set that equal to false. Now we want to update our is running ball based on our desired direction vector. So if we're actually moving, so if we're moving in the X or the Z directions, then we want to set our ball to true, otherwise we can set it to false. So to do that, I'm going to set is running equal to, I'm going to do an open brackets, and I can grab the desired direction dot X. I'm going to check whether that is greater than 0.1 F or our desired direction dot X is less than negative 0.1 F. And outside of these brackets, I'm gonna put another OR and another set of brackets. I'm gonna do the same for the Z direction. So desired direction dot, dot, dot Z is greater than 0.1F or desired direction dot Z is less than negative 0.1F. So this is the start of our ternary operator. It's sort of like an if statement, but it runs in one line. So this is our question towards the computer. It's our if statement. So if I put a question that counts as our if statement, and then we can set our value based on whether this is true or whether it's false. So if it's true, we're gonna set our is running ball to true. Otherwise, with a colon, we can set it to false. So if it's true or if it's false, we want to set our is running ball inside of our animator equal to true or false respectively. So what I'm going to do is we're going to create a reference to our animator. So private animator, and I'll call this animator. In our awake void, I'm going to type animator is equal to get component animator like so and now that we have our animator reference back in our animate run void we can set animator dot set ball and in quotation marks we can set our is running ball and with a comma we can set it to our is running ball that we have in our code the next thing we need to do is get our attack input. 
So in our awake void, we can grab input actions dot player dot attack dot performed. We're going to make that plus equal to our callback context. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it to an attack method that we're going to create. So if we have performed the click of the mouse, then we will attack. Once we've done this, we can go to our attack. So we need to create an attack void. So under the animate run, I'm going to create a new void called attack. And the first thing we want to do is we want to check whether we are attacking or not, which we can define as ball. So I can go is or if is attacking. We want to check whether we are not attacking. So I can put an exclamation mark. And now we're checking whether attacking is false. So if we're not attacking, we can go animator dot set trigger. And the trigger is going to be our is attacking trigger that we created. After that, we can start a coroutine. So we can type in start coroutine. And I'll call this initialize attack. Now let's create an IE numerator called initialize attack. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wait for 0.1 seconds and then we can set our attacking ball to true. Now we're doing this because if we set it to true straight away, it takes a little bit of time for our trigger to actually start the animation and therefore it'll go back to false straight away. This is because we're going to set it back to not attacking in our update after we have gone through a specified amount of time through our animation. So what I can do is type in yield return new wait for seconds and we can just type in 0.1 seconds and after we've waited that time we can set is attacking to true. Now we need to create an update. So I'm going to type in void update and I'm going to check if we are attacking and our animator dot get current animator state info. So we're getting our current animator state info. So we're going to get this on our first layer. So our attack layer, we're going to get the normalized time. I'm going to check whether that is greater than or equal to an animation finish time, which we can define. And if it is, then we can set is attacking back to false. So now we need to define this float. We can type in serialize field, private float, animation finish time, and you can set it to a value you want. Now this is going to be between zero and one or 0% and 100%. So once we're 90% through the animation, there's not much going on in this specific animation. So I can set it back to false. And if we're not attacking, then we can start attacking again, which means we can't attack so long as our animation is playing. So let's have a look. So we can run around, we can attack, attack again. If I click while I'm attacking, it doesn't work. Okay, if I can run around and I attack, you can see I can attack whilst I'm running around. Let me know in the comments if you want any more tutorials on this sort of topic. But other than that, leave a like and let me know what you thought in the comments section. Please support me on Patreon if you can. If you can't, that's okay. Otherwise, join my Discord server and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.